The insect world is so different from ours. Insects with unimaginable strength, agility, camouflage and teamwork live all over the modern world. Insects outnumber people by approximately 1.4 billion to 1. When we see how insects live, from laying eggs inside prey to devouring prey alive, you wouldn't be wrong for saying that the insect world must be the most brutal way of life. Let's just be thankful that we can squash most of them with just one finger. But what if I was to tell you there was a time when pigeon sized dragonflies ruled the skies called Meganera, and a 2.6 meter long millipede called Arthropera shuffling along the swamp floor? It was probably the largest arthropod to walk on land. So how did arthropods get so large during this time? The answer is oxygen. During the Carboniferous stage, wood-eating bacteria, the bacteria that is responsible for the decomposition of trees, hadn't evolved. So Earth's giant primordial forests were taking in lots of carbon dioxide and pumping oxygen back out into the atmosphere. And because the trees weren't decomposing, the carbon dioxide wasn't being released back into the atmosphere. The result was an atmosphere consisting of 35% oxygen compared to 21% today. This, coupled with moist air, made it easier for arthropods to breathe. The Carboniferous period, part of the late Paleozoic era, takes its name from large underground coal deposits that date to it. Formed from prehistoric vegetation, many of these deposits are found in parts of Europe, North America and Asia that were lush, tropically located regions during the time. When we look at life during this era, we see giant insects like I mentioned earlier. But a lot of the insects that we find today hadn't evolved yet. Ants and bees, for example, didn't evolve until roughly 150 million years later, making them almost closer to us than life during the Carboniferous period. Some of the first amphibians, reptiles and sharks were also present during this era. But before we move on to them, let's go back to the animals I had mentioned previously. Arthropleura was a relative of the modern millipede and could reach lengths of up to 2.6 meters, weighing roughly 50 kg. Although Arthropleura was truly terrifying, they were likely entirely herbivorous. An Arthropleura fossil was found in Scotland in 1967, which had the remains of plants called giant club mosses in the area where its gut would have been. It's possible that the fossils were just preserved together by accident, so we can't be certain that the plants were Arthropleura's last meal. If its diet was like that of modern day millipedes, it is likely that it would have lived on plant remains, seeds and spores. Meganeura was a species of griffin fly that reached a wingspan of up to 30 inches. Meganeura preyed on other airborne insects, such as other species of griffin flies and mayflies, they also preyed upon terrestrial animals, such as early reptiles. Like dragonflies today, Meganeura likely hunted with its large mandibles and sharp legs, using its enormous eyes to spot prey. Larva lived in vertical burrows in areas that were near water. At this stage of life, they were ambush predators, hunting spiders, insects and small amphibians. But even Meganeura had a predator, Proterogenerus a large amphibian which was likely one of the largest land predators of the time, reaching roughly 2.5 meters in length. It may have also fed on Arthropleura. Another scary arthropod of this time was Pulmonus scorpius, a large scorpion that could be as long as 70 centimeters. Pulmonus scorpius retains several general arthropod features which are absent in modern scorpions, such as large lateral eyes and a lack of adaptation for a burrowing lifestyle. It was likely an active diurnal predator, and the presence of bucklungs indicate that it was fully terrestrial, unlike Euryptids, a family of sea scorpions that existed at the same time. Diet of Pulmus scorpius is not exactly known, but it is probable that it preyed on smaller arthropods and small tetrapods. Reptiles in this period had only just begun to evolve. It was reptiles that had evolved perhaps one of the most important traits in evolutionary history, the amniotic egg. 
Amniotic eggs are eggs that are encased by extra embryonic membranes, which allowed animals to evolve into more terrestrial environments by creating a self-sustaining environment for the embryo to develop in. So yes, the egg came way before the chicken. The most important trait that distinguishes reptiles from amphibians is their reproductive system. The shelled eggs of reptiles are better able to withstand dry conditions, and thus don't need to be laid in water or moist ground. The evolution of reptiles was spurred by the increasingly cold and dry climate of the late Carboniferous period. One of the earliest reptiles yet identified, Hylonomus, appeared about 315 million years ago and the giant Ophiocodon only a few million years later. By the end of the Carboniferous, reptiles had migrated well towards the interior of Pangaea. These early pioneers went on to spawn the Archaeosaurs, Pelocosaurs and Therapsids of the ensuing Permian period. It was the Archaeosaurs that went on to spawn the first dinosaurs nearly a hundred million years later. Among the other animals that lived in the Carboniferous were sharks, like the peculiar looking Adustus sharks which could reach a length of up to 2.6 metres and was comfortably the top predator in the ocean at the time. The Carboniferous period came to an end roughly 298 million years ago when the Earth's climate began to cool and dry, reducing the number of humid rainforests and swamps around the world. This resulted in many animals, especially the arthropods, becoming extinct and giving rise to the Permian period when new animals began to rise to the top, like Demetrodon and Gorgonopsion. Thanks for watching today's video. Only 12% of people watching this video are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy my content and want to stay up to date, then please subscribe. It goes a long way to help the channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. Have a good one.